We're gonna call this our rack is stupid project, right? Mm. <laughs> a little bit. We need a new rack. You know, we could just figure out what screw size fits in these holes and just get some machine crew screws and tap them into yeah. threaded. Re threaded racks are better than this. Well, we don't even have one that actually takes rack nuts. That's the problem. <laughs> I don't know, rack nuts suck too. Oh, they do, but I mean, it's better than but, but it, this fireball, non threaded holes. This firewall looks so good in there like that. It does. So we decided to replace our old firewall with this Netgate 5100 and this rackmount.it rack mount kit. And uh, this was the real easy part was putting it in actually. It, um, it was the setup that I wanna talk about and changing over from a completely different firewall to another firewall. They both run PFSense, uh, but there's sometimes some challenges in matching everything up when things aren't exactly the same when you swap things out. So now it's all installed. And I know someone's going to complain because of the screws in there, but that's why I had the first part of the video. Uh, this is a, actually, this is a telecom rack that I've had for like 15 years of putting stuff in it. And it doesn't have the proper uh, screw backings. So it's hard to reach these top ones. And two screws is enough. Someone will criticize it and complain. I just get it out of the way. Go ahead and complain about it. It's not how we do our customer stuff, but for our rack, two screws is fine and holding everything perfectly tight. All right, back to why we're here for the video. Swapping out PFSense is generally not too painful. Uh, it's People get worried about it and they worry that maybe if they trade out a uh, PFSense box, they're gonna have trouble lining up the networks, what'll happen, all the firewall rules, et cetera, et cetera. And I've done a video a while ago on backup and restore on PFSense and it's actually only gotten better because of the way they handle it. So. We swapped out from a custom build. I wanted to go ahead and use an actual NetGate box. Uh, part of the reason for that was, you know, I've been stocking a lot more NetGate boxes because we install so many of them for clients. And I said, you know what, let's just use a NetGate ourselves because someone has called me out on it going, hey, Tom, don't you have a custom built one? And I'm like, yeah, and it's getting long in the tooth. I've had it forever. It's old. It's a really old Xeon. And I, uh, you know, I just said, okay, let's retire that and put a NEC 5100 in there. That's perfectly adequate for what we do here at the office. And uh, then I always keep a spare in stock. This is something we do both our clients and of course for us, anything critical, we try to keep two of uh, because, well, if something goes down, I don't want to wait, you know, even if it's next day or shipping, that's a whole day of, well, no firewall. That would be bad. And we kind of need that to get our work done. But when swapping, and I have so many rules and features and VPNs and lots of settings. Um, how do you get all that transported over from a custom built box to a NetGate box or vice versa? If you move from NetGate box or really any different box that doesn't match the same, there's going to be an alignment you have to do with the network interfaces, which if it was just that would be pretty easy. So let's first just take a look right here. So this is PFSense running on my lab. And it's running on my lab because it's the easiest way to demo it. Everyone seems to ask about uh, virtualizing it and complains about the problems they've run into of virtualizing it, such as uh, Alt-Q support in PFSense not being as good or even missing in some of them. And someone's even commented that in a new version of VMware, apparently it doesn't, I'm not clear if Alt-Q is going to be supported. I've seen some trouble on that. I, I'm not a big fan of virtualizing it. Uh, it just... It seems to be more trouble than it's worth. And I've had people with little hiccups and bugs that went away as soon as they went back to real hardware. Enough of that talk. But for demonstration purposes, it's way easier to virtualize it. And uh, so we have WAN at XN0, LAN, XN1, and right here, XN2. And what these are is each one of the network interfaces on here, when you add them in Zen, they get added as uh, XN, except when you add ones that are uh, SRIOV. So uh, my Zen server does have a 10 gig card that does support SRIOV. Basically it's a, a virtualized version of pass-through and I set it up on here for demonstration purposes. Uh, there's not only not too much to configure it, you can Google how to uh, add SRIOV, but it does require that the motherboard and the network card support it. But back to the point here, we can go ahead and take this card and we've attached it to it. And we're gonna go ahead and look right here inside of our up and running PFSense, and we're going to look at the interfaces, assignments. And we see we have this extra network card just not in use, hanging out there. So here's this one's, but let's 
the goal really, I want to take this, not X and then zero, but I X V zero and make it the new WAN. So a couple ways we can do it. First, we can just go here to the console and change interfaces. Absolutely easy way to do it. You go to assign interfaces, hit one, and there the options are. So if we wanted to swap out which one belonged to which and rewrite all the interfaces, restart the firewall. But I want to talk about doing it via the backup method. And the reason I bring it up doing this way is because you can back up and restore a lot more. And we're going to talk a little about the XML config file that comes with uh, the system. So we're going to go over here and let's go to the PFSense diagnostics, backup, restore. We're going to download the file. And I have it right here. We're going to go ahead and open it up with an editor. Don't open this up with Notepad because it can leave extra spaces in there. Uh, use a proper editor or use uh, Vim. Make sure it's an editor that's made for editing uh, files without adding any extra wraparound spaces. So whatever your editor of your choice, for me, it's the Genie editor in, here in Linux, but this works perfectly fine. So what we're looking at is the entire config file for everything inside of here. And so let's take a look at how we swap the network interfaces. So we go here, interfaces, assignments. We have XN0 as WAN and IXV0 as what we want to be WAN. Well, the real simple way to do it, we're going to control F and we're going to say N0. And there it is. It actually only occurs once. So right here's interfaces, WAN, and there's the interface. All the rules and everything are attached to what you called your WAN interface. So we called this one WAN. So all the rules are attached to the WAN interface. So once we change the actual physical layer of it here to the new interface, then all the rules and everything follow it. So let me go over here and back over real quick just to show you. So IXV0, I'm just going to type that in right here. IXV0. We're going to go ahead and uh, just do a save as. We'll call this uh, new WAN. Hit save, just so we have a separate file name. This one's saved, but all the rules that are attached to it, such as when we go to firewall, rules, there's not many, I just have a couple here. Uh, for dark stat, allow SSH, etc. Those are going to copy over to the new interface automatically because it's named the same, it's still called WAN. So we're gonna go here and uh, this is saved. Just close it, diagnostics, backup restore. Choose file, new WAN, and go ahead and restore all. You could just do the interface, but we'll do just a full restore of the system. I wanted to, I didn't really change anything, of course, but we're going to get to that next and show what happens when you do a more drastic change. The firewall configuration has been updated. Firewall is now rebooting. Go over here to the interface here, and you'll watch it go through the reboot process. And there it kicks off, and we'll fast forward through this real quick while it reboots. All right, the system's rebooted, and you can see WAN is now assigned to IXV0. And it did get a new IP address because uh, there's a new MAC address, so it got handed a new IP address. So we can log into it. And because it was a full reinstall, it says, uh, package process finished successfully. And what it does is it'll reevaluate the packages and see if there's changes uh, from what it has and goes, okay, I'm going to change everything. And that's really it for restoring it. So if you were to, and for me, we'll get more specific to my use case here, with our XG51, SG5100, there was a lot of changes that we had in the network interfaces. So I had to reassign all the different interfaces to match because of the custom, uh, custom machine we had to the way the interface names are on that one. But that's not where we had to stop. So it turns out in all of the system settings, for example, uh, I had a whole lot of system tunables that I had changed over the time. I had a lot of things that turned out to be very incompatible when it came to the custom config. So when I would try to reboot the 5100, it would go into basically a non-booting mode. And I said, you know, there's two ways to approach this. And I went ahead and went What's not really more difficult, but um, I've decided I didn't want any of those weird settings in my system. So we can do a different type of restore. So we're going to go over here to backup and restore. And this is what's kind of cool about PFSense is you can do very granular restore. So I really only needed um, my packages, my firewall rules uh, to be copied over. So I just copied over the interfaces, the package, and the firewall rules, and then the things like OpenVPN. 
pretty straightforward. The only extra thing I really had to do that required some manual editing was doing the certificates. So you import export certificates as well. So let's show a little bit more how that's done. And I'll start with like, for example, we're gonna go ahead and go over to my PFSense backup of our actual PFSense here. And this is the one for our office. And we're gonna go ahead, not restore the whole thing, but let's go ahead and say, let's just restore the package manager, for example. And I bring this up because one of the things that's obviously a really big deal to set up, well, is packages or even the VPN. So let's just go ahead and open up a new window real quick here. And we'll look at like the VPN. So right now, no VPN server set up. And we'll just do this one real quick, do the VPN, because the package manager is a little bit more involved. So we go over here to open VPN and just hit restore. Are you sure? Yep. Firewall may need to be rebooted. I don't think it will be. And just like that, we have the VPN set up. So there's the VPN settings uh, for my office. And we actually have two VPNs, one's for phones, one's for uh, actually getting into the network. And we keep two separate sets of users and two separate networks for them with a lot of rules. So you can see that quickly you can restore settings back from PFSense. But let's dig a little further. Why not look at the package manager? And we're gonna use that same one, choose file, and we'll choose packages. And we'll go ahead and uh, restore configuration data. Are you sure you wish to restore this? Yep. All right, may need to be rebooted, actually won't. We're gonna go to the package manager. Now this is a little bit stranger because it's going to have broken packages. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, there's my settings for there. And let's do the more complicated one. Let's look at what happens when we uh, fix Sericata. So Sericata, if you spend a lot of time setting up Sericata or tuning it and suppressing rules and figuring out which ones are good and which ones are bad, it can take some uh, time doing. And yes, PFSense does in that single backup file do this. And what if you wanted to then import that configuration to another one? Well, you can do that too. So let's see what happens here. So PFSense, Sericata, completely installed. All right, we're going to go over here to services, Sericata, and Obviously, these are more networks that I have in mind that don't exist on this system, but the ones that names matched, it was able to set up right away. So we can just go ahead and purge these. That's thinking, there we go. Purge the last one. And now I have uh, Sierracata all set up and running with the rules, how I want them. You know, it remembered everything here. It'll have the different options turned on, categories set up, flow stream, variables, et cetera, et cetera. And away you go. That easy to configure. And now Sericata is up and running. You can see I did this in all real time on this system. This is one of the advantages you have with PFSense of being able to do this. Now I mentioned the certificates. That one's actually a little bit tricky. Now I'm not going to show you the search that I have, but I'll show you in the config file how this can be done. So we're going to switch back over to this. And we'll open with other application. And I believe it is under slash cert. There we go. Uh, and we need to find the certificate file. There we go. And all I had to do, and these are the ones not from my main computer, these are the ones from here, is go through here and you can see this is like the web configuration certificate. So all I had to do to get this in here is copy and paste this little piece into the XML file, and that allows it to import the certificate again. So I just grabbed that out of one XML file, the, my uh, original config, restored the certificates, restored the couple things I needed, and now I've custom done the firewall upgrade for my system. And this is one of those things that they make it really easy to do in PFSense is to have this granular control uh, and look at this and be able to go, all right, I just want to change this or change this or move these type of things in here. and it's just like no big deal. You can move them and away they go. And if I want to put this thing completely back to the way it was, go back up, restore again. And, you know, we have Sericata. We've got other things all set up in here. Or we can go back to choose file. And we're going to go back to uh, the downloads folder. And here's our generic config. This is the new WAN. This is the generic config that we had in the beginning. And uh, we'll just go ahead and restore. And it probably is going to prompt me for a reboot, which it should because it swaps some network information and it's a full restore again. 
firewall configuration been changed, now rebooting. And we'll go ahead and we'll watch it do the reboot again. All right, it's going to reboot. All right, so I booted, configured, and you notice that went back to the 196 address, not the 197, because it's back to the other uh, before we swap the WAN. So we'll go here. Same thing, it's going to say, hey, we uh, successfully you know, updated the packages because it was a full thing. And we go back over here, we see, well, Sericata is missing. Everything's back to the way it was. You can flip-flop PFSense really quickly back and forth like this to different options, uh, to different config files. And all you have to do is save just that one XML file to make this work. Now, the last thing I'll comment on that I've actually worked with a client that was really impressed the way they did this was they went through and had put in a whole lot of VLANs. And the way they did it, because I couldn't believe how many they had created for a very large, complicated um, project. Well, I say large, complicated, but I mean, they simplified it by scripting it all. Um, they wanted to build, I think it was 120 VLANs or some larger number based on an apartment complex where they wanted to separate everyone into their own VLAN. And instead of going through and manually creating all the networks, they actually created uh, just a couple of them, looked at the XML file, and then took the XML file, repeated that information, incrementing things as needed uh, with a series of scripts, and then put it back up there and created all the different networks. And I thought this was a rather clever way to do this. So you could look at the differential changes, and like I said, it's all XML, so it's easy to read, and make those changes programmatically, and then re-upload it to PFSense to have this uh, done. It was an interesting project. I was uh, helping them with a couple aspects of it, but they figured out the programming without me. But it's not too difficult. I'm just, I'm not a coder, so I didn't write it, but it was pretty cool the way they did that because, well, it's not too difficult. You look at it and go, these are the settings that need to be added to the XML file. And then we just increment them all by one, so to speak, which included a separate DHCP server, each one, a separate, you know, VLAN ID and a separate network. Uh, well, one physical card it's attached to, but then separating out all the VLANs on the one physical and uh, feeding off all these different uh, places to supply internet to them. So it's really flexible being able to do that with the backup file. It's really something I think people get more scared of when they've had weird problems with PFSense or when you're in my situation, switching from a custom build to a NetGate box, there are different things that you may run into that just don't work, including when you have a bunch of tunables. You can probably go through and say, just remove all those. And I probably could have uh, made all the changes to align it properly to go to a completely different platform. Because if you're not familiar, and we'll pull it up real quick here, the SG5100 does not have anything more than a serial type console X, uh, connection. Well, it's actually USB. But because of that, you can't just go in and... Uh, it wanted to output things to VGA, so that was the first challenge to run into of because I had custom loaded it, it had issues uh, trying to output for the video. So there was the first challenge I would have had to fix, but because I just needed really the rules uh, and the VPNs and the certificates for my old uh, system, it really wasn't that much more. It seemed like less time to me just pull in those things and then pop in the package manager. So uh, Sericata and my Radius server and all the users that are in Radius server were set up. That was the quick change. I did that. Uh, then you modify very little, and now I've got a completely working SG5100. Now, like I said about having a spare, somebody, someone's going to ask me why I don't just put it in HA. And the reason for HA is because we only have a five block of IPs on the WAN. So if you're familiar or watch my HA video, you'll know you kind of have to, I call it wasting IP addresses because you have to assign IP addresses to each one. Just not that big of a deal for us. Uh, we just have the backup file. Anytime we make a change, our process is to put the backup file in the proper backup folder that me or my other technicians have access to. So when you plug one of these in, clean boot, make sure it's up to date with the same version of ours, which you always keep ours on the latest version of uh, PFSense. You quickly restore it. And when it's uh, time for it to reboot, it pl plug it in the same network ports as ours, and it's just going to work. Uh, when you're going from the same model to the same model, this is really great. Uh, and we do this for our clients. Matter of fact, because we always, when we change things on the client, we keep a copy of their backup file. And because we stock many of the ones that we have installed at our clients, uh, when, if 
the chance that there's a failure of a device, we have the backup file and we bring the firewall with us in case that's what the problem is when we have to go on site if something becomes completely non-functional. And it's as easy as just pop that backup file in. And as fast as you've seen it here, especially with a reasonably fast box, you're talking, you have the client back up and restored. The settings are applied. It's exactly like just where you left off. The most important thing to do, and there is a rescue option in PFSense for those of you that don't do it. And yes, I've had a few tech friends I've had to help with this. Um, if you don't back up that file and somehow you crash your PFSense or lock yourself out of it through uh, some misfortune or oops clickings, uh, it does have the ability to rescue because it's all saved in that one XML file. And that's the last thing I'm going to show you real quick, just ways to edit that. So if you have SSH installed and set up on PFSense, which is, I'll show you real quick, system, advanced, enable secure shell. I have it on port 222. And on for this purposes, because I'm actually administering a firewall through the WAN interface, I do have a rule right here that allows SSH remote access to it uh, right here, port 222, just to match. Go back over here. SSH in, and we go to, whoops, cd slash cf conf, and there is the uh, XML file in here. So we go to vim config.xml. Whoops, vi, I, I want to type vim. But there's that same file as it lives right here on the server. And this is where if you wanted to uh, don't edit it from here that you edit it differently from there. But if you wanted to get that file, this is the uh, location of it, cf slash conf, and then it's the conf.xml file. So if you've crashed the machine, but then boot it up and want to pull the drive out and get this file, right there's where you get that. Now, the last little piece I'll show you, right from the documentation in PFSense, the PFSense XML configuration file. So it says the same thing I said, here's the config file, here's where it's located, etc. This is the kind of cool part that I like. So for administrating, for those who are familiar with the Vi editor, use the Vi config command to edit the running configuration live. And after saving quitting editor, firewall will remove the cache configuration and then changes will be visible in the GUI. The changes will not be active until that service relevant to the edited portion of the config is restarted. So let's show you uh, that right here. So log in again get a shell and instead of typing vi and then going and finding a file you can actually just type vi config right from the command line and then we're going to go and look at the firewall and right here's uh dark stat so it's on port 666 we can do a quick find actually for this 666 i think it's the only time it occurs it is so right there's the description dark stat data web and port 666 let's just change that to a seven WQ, the magic incantation to exit Vi and save. And we'll refresh. And you'll see it's now changed it. But please note, until you actually, and I'm just going to move it arbitrarily as a rule, hit apply, until you apply and reload the rule set it or reboot the firewall, either one of those, the relevant section has not been loaded. So it may display that, but it actually hasn't applied the changes. And the UI, because you're making the changes within here, realizes there's a change and asks it to be applied. And then sometimes you'll have to either restart a service or do something like I just there, or like I said, just reboot the firewall. So it's just important to remember if you do want to edit or have some custom thing you'd like to do from the command line, if you make changes in here of anything, you have to then reload that relevant service, but at least they've made it really convenient to be able to go in here right from the command line without any extra tools, SSH in, and start making changes to the system. If you have some custom thing you want changed or you've now goofed something that has locked you out of the UI, but you still have SSH access or council access to be able to go right in and do this, because uh, that's certainly something people have done is accidentally disable rules and lock themselves out of it on many occasions. But some of the quicker ways you can also do that too, and I'll point out, is if you go to restore recent configuration, so option 15, it can list the uh, backups and list the changes that you made. For example, when you lock yourself out and you want to, uh, like we just reordered the firewall rule, you can actually just restore a backup, choose one of the options and roll it back one or two feet, uh, one or two options back to unlock yourself back out from the command line as well. So control C and exit that. 
But I'll leave links to documentation. I just want to show that it's relatively uh, harmless to configure this via there, provided you know what you're doing. Edit the XML file, uh, change it. We've got a lot of confidence in doing this because we've done it so many times and restored things. It's also handy if you spend a lot of time configuring something, let's say Sericata, and you just wanted to import that configuration into another firewall for all the time you spent, uh, you know, custom tuning or setting up settings in there. Uh, you can see it's a lot quicker than going through and setting it up manually each time. Uh, and if you want to change anything, even custom in that, that package config information is still located in XML file. So you can make all the changes you want in there, um, provided they're proper and not goofed up and then re-import it in there. And PFSense does have a sanity check uh, to make sure that you haven't broke the XML file in some unusual way. Uh, it won't let you load a broken file. It does say, hey, this file's got a problem with it. And then you can start over. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching, and see you next time.